Hello everybody and welcome back to Nathan Adams Cars. Today I'm in Northern Virginia, which is where I live, at Tedbert, Lincoln and Ford. They're gonna let me stop by and take a look at some of their selection. In particular, we're taking a look at the new Lincoln Navigator. So we have to see how this new Lincoln Navigator stands up to the competition and Tedbert Lincoln's gonna let me do that. So check them out, details for them are in the description below and let's get started on the review. All right, everybody, here we have the 2019 Lincoln Navigator. This particular one is the top of the line trim, the black label, and it has the chroma crystal blue exterior color. Up front, of course, you'll see all these LED headlights, fog lights, running lights, every single light you could imagine in LED, and also that very well-defined grille for the Lincoln brand, which helps to differentiate the style on this car. Now, when you start it up and the headlights are on, you're going to see the Lincoln Star will be illuminated very elegantly and it just even further differentiates the car from other products in the family. Now looking out back you will see the tailgate operating one way here with the remote. You just double tap that button, it opens right up and then of course you'll see how much space is back there. We're going to get more into the details of the cargo area and third row seats and the second row seats and all that as well. But another way to open the tailgate is with this hands-free function with your feet. That is obviously very, very nice. And of course, something you would expect for a car like this, top of the line trim with a price tag over $100,000. Further justifying that price tag is these nice mats with those Lincoln badges on them, as well as the third row, which is operated with this electronic control there. That button puts the third row down. With the third row up, you still have 19.3 cubic feet of cargo space. Putting it down gives you 63.6 cubic feet. So it's very, very nice uh, to have all that storage. Putting this button, pressing that button will allow these seats to go down, but uh, just make sure that you take everything out of the seat before you do it. Otherwise, it won't close properly, of course. I believe that is for the headset for those displays back there, $2,000 option for that. But anyway, moving back under this little compartment, you'll see that you're Spare tire jack is there, as well as just some more cargo space and a safety net or a cargo net for that area there. Total cargo space with all the seats down is 103.3 cubic feet, uh, but some of that is robbed by that center console in the second row. We'll talk about that in a bit. Moving on, you'll see the passengers have just as nice of a door panel as the ones up front with that unique handle and uh, just these nice designs with one of those 20 speakers, this car has a fantastic audio system with 20 different speakers. You can see the design is not you know, messed up there in the back at all. Pressing this button allows you to access the third row and you can see just how easy it is just to slide that seat forward and it just goes flush up against the passenger seat in the front. And you can just walk on into the third row. It's very open and inviting to get back there. Wow. <laughs> Have a lot of space. I just walked right in there. That was pretty incredible, honestly. This button right here allows the seats to recline. How comfortable. These third row seats have to be very relaxing. A little bit of a head room issue back here, but that's just because I'm not relaxing enough. <laughs> I can also show you that getting out is just about as easy. You just have to crouch a little bit. You have this nice footstep down here. And you take your step out. And you're out. And moving forward with this, well, I guess moving back, I'm putting that seat back into place very effortlessly. But you'll see that it does have that adjustment to manually slide the seats back and forth and to recline them with that lever on the side which is interesting for the second row to have that. But it does have this nice center console with a lot of storage space in the middle, even just like these second row passengers are just as important as the front. They're gonna get a full power outlet, a cigarette lighter outlet, and two USB ports, as well as all of these different AC controls. Now again, it's as easy as pushing a button just to close that tailgate and check out the look back here. This light bar for the tail light is beautiful. Now what's very difficult for auto manufacturers to do is to make a big box shape like this look beautiful. 
And what it seems like Lincoln does is just adorn it with the right details where it's necessary. Too much chrome doesn't look good, but those thin strips of chrome down here with those big wheels with that nice design, it all just goes so well. And I love this color. At first I wasn't sure. I don't know if I'd get it for myself, but it's a very classy color because it's a way to bring in color to a type of car that usually wants to be very contemporary. Now moving on to the interior up front, you're gonna see these perfect position seats which just perfectly position to every single contour of your body as well as showing you the massaging seat function. I'll show you that in a little bit, but they really remind you why you're in the black label or the fact that you are in the black label, top of the line trim with every single feature, including these individual thigh adjustment extenders there, which is just next level in my opinion. The shoulder adjustment and the headrest going up and down, you can really contour this for a uniquely comfortable experience as the brochure would tell you. Now taking a step into the interior as effortlessly as everything else in this car, you're just going to be able to experience how luxury welcomes you in this 2019 Lincoln Navigator with the look at that 12 inch display. Amazing. To drive, press brake and gear shift button. Okay, we have the brake depressed, as you can see below. The gear shift button is this one right here. I put it into drive and it welcomes me. Now going over every single feature in this top of the line Lincoln Navigator would take me way more than 20 minutes, but I'll show you a lot of the basics, which are just very nice amenities like heated and ventilated seats up front. And uh, those plastics can be a little hard for this price tag, but the way that they're designed and incorporated with everything else is done so, so elegantly that uh, it is very easily forgiven. You don't really notice it at all, to be honest with you. And every little detail really comes together. Just look at the interior there with the chrome piece and uh, this little design, just that little touch really makes a big difference. And then of course, how you adjust these seats on the side to contour every single part of the seat just to your perfect fit for you is just there very easily on the side. Now the massaging seat function is very nice. Oh, massaging seats. It's so nice. Now, of course it has that adjustable center gauge cluster, but more details can be seen on the large heads up display with a lot of details. You're gonna see more about that in a little bit, but it's appropriately large because this car has a huge hood. It's a big vehicle. You don't wanna have all these details crammed into some small displays. So, you know, they have that really large heads up display to accommodate that. And I think that is nice. It just shows, you know, the thinking that they put into this car. And of course, also those side view mirrors with the blind spot system and all that stuff is also appropriately large for this vehicle. And everything else is appropriately proportioned. And that's what I mean by those, some of the materials not being maybe the best, they are incorporated so well. And then of course they're illuminated with all of these nice lights with these sharp LEDs in the interior and these interior compartments with the wireless charging and more USBs up front, as well as you'll see that drive mode function back there. It has auto hold braking and more storage back here in that center console as well. Now this car also has the newest edition of the sync system here uh, developed by Ford and I think it's one of the leading systems. It's very responsive, very intuitive, and you can have a split display there with the navigation on one side and just see every single thing. Moving more into details on this center display, you can see a lot of things like tire pressure and all the normal things. But those gauges, kind of elegant there. One really nice thing that I was surprised by is the adjustable pedals. You can slide them up and down to accommodate the length of your legs, as well as the steering wheel, which of course is also power operated. Again, I'm going to say of course. Of course it has this fully adjustable steering wheel, but again, it's something that's nice to have. One of the options that is super nice is this panoramic display. Just look at that. You can see these different buttons to close the shades. There they go. And I have to hold it, huh? Nope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> have to hold it. And it's opaque. It's not a mesh. So now I'm completely closed off. I don't have a panoramic sunroof, appearingly. Is that a word? It doesn't look like I have a fully working uh, panoramic sunroof, but uh, that's a nice look because I can open it up and it's completely open. Some cars, they have like that mesh, which I feel like kind of, you don't really have the option to fully block out the sun. And in this case you do, so that's nice. 
All right, let's take it for a drive. Got my mirrors adjusted. I'm gonna turn off my electronic parking brake. I have it in drive. The drive mode that I can select, I will put it into not slow climb, not slippery, normal four by four maybe, normal, conserve, excite. Let's start with excite. I figure we can start with Excite because this is not probably known as a very exciting car other than to be excited by how nice it is, which is certainly a truth. Very smooth application of power and steering and braking. Almost like too soft on the braking, but you know, it's a luxury car. Since I put it into the Excite mode, I can tell the suspension is reacting differently. It's stiffer, you know, which again is one of those things that's kind of appropriate. But just going around that turn and getting on the power, I can feel the steering is actually pretty quick. It's pretty nimble and responsive. It doesn't feel too floaty. And the fact that you can put this huge SUV into a mode called Excite and have more of an exciting ride is pretty impressive in my opinion. And even on the downshifts, I can hear it revving up. It's ready to go. Now we're at a stoplight. When we start to go, let's see kind of how it accelerates. Those massaging seats are very nice at a stoplight. All right, acceleration time. Wow. All right, I'm applying the throttle very lightly, maybe about a third, because, you know, I'm not in a racetrack. I'm not gonna really hit it here anyway. But it was very smooth application of the power. And uh, it was also a quick pickup. I can get out of the way of traffic. I don't have to feel like I'm in a big boat. So, you know, those are things that you might be afraid of going to a full-size car like this, especially considering all of its competitors are kind of crossovers now. This is a real deal, this is a full SUV. And it handles super nicely. Very impressive here in Excite. I do wanna change it as I'm going onto these windy roads uh, to something kind of different than what you might expect. It's a very shaky camera. <laughs> Sorry about that. But here I go into the more windy roads. I'm going to put it into the other mode. Let's put it into conserve. Let's be conservative. I hit the gas, and it's conserving for me. It is showing uh, my miles per gallon now in the tachometer. To be honest, I'm not sure if it was showing that before, but it is now. I'm going a nice 40 miles an hour, very conservatively, and it just feels smooth. What's nice is I can uh, twist this dial. It's a little bit far back to reach with my right hand into the center console to switch between the different mode. We'll go over to normal mode and see how that feels. All right. Wow. I'm on a road that is kind of bumpy. It's kind of an older road. It's not the smoothest road I've been on, that's for sure. And uh, there's trees around me, as you can see, I'm sure, out of the side windows. Very big bump there. But the car is handling the bumps very nicely. And that's in normal mode. Because in a car like this, normal effortless and balanced that's normal <laughs> we'll see how effortless it is to get on the road here and just go what's weird is i feel like i'm expecting the steering not to be as linear and to the point i feel like i'm expecting some vagueness so i keep turning around these 90 degree turns and i have to straighten the steering wheel back out because i'm expecting the car to just kind of like be all over the place but it's a very heavy vehicle and it steers kind of where the steering wheel goes it's going to go there and uh I think that's a testament to how the steering is. Now I'm on a windy road here. Let's see how wallowy it is. Let's see if it, if I flip over on my side. No, I'm not going too fast around these curves, but the car's handling it nicely now. Powering up the turn. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's cool. Wow. 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 Okay, so powering up the turn, it has a turbo, it kicks down a gear because it has 10 of them. It kicks down a gear and it just immediately is in the torque band, the part of the power band where it has more torque. And uh, I'm not sure how much lag there is. I'm sure a lot of it's mitigated just by having that 10 speed transmission, keeping the RPMs right where they need to be. But if the car is trying to be an econ mode, sorry, a more economic mode, like conserve mode, it's going to try to keep the RPMs low. So it's gonna fight between that desire to go fast and that desire to be conservative and you can tell when you're switching modes you know so you do have to have it in the right mode for what you want it's nice to have that option but also 
you kind of have to choose because if you don't you're going to find yourself somewhere in between and the car is going to change its dynamic as you're going i find that to be interesting now as i go up these bumps i told you this is a real suv and it feels like it's because it's bouncing up and down but all can be forgiven by these massaging seats <laughs> this car is incredible let's see if i can open up this uh panoramic sunroof yep one touch to open it i had to hold it to close it and i'm not sure if that was my fault okay so one touch brings it halfway but i don't have to hold it as i'm driving i can focus on the road what i'm noticing on the heads-up display here is that it's telling me the speed limit which is not super new to the industry and for that technology but it's nice to have you know i can see my speed compared to what the actual speed limit is and uh, they're the same so now for a reference point who am I to talk about a $100,000 full-size SUV in the marketplace? Well, I have been in the car business for about four years. I've worked for uh, Acura dealerships, BMW, and Audi. So I sold all their SUVs. And I've gotten to like all of them individually for their different things that they offer. Like the BMW is a performance brand. And Acura is the more precise, accurate, focused brand of Honda. You know, more technology and stuff like that. And then Audi is similar to Acura in that regard. It's kind of like the best of both worlds between luxury and, and uh, performance. But this is luxury. There's no question about that. It doesn't waver. It knows its purpose and it serves it well. This is a luxury vehicle and I'm feeling very luxurious driving it. You could say based on that, that this car kind of fulfills what the uh, sticker is telling you it's doing the market it competes with them all very well because compared to those other cars this car is special you know it's a little bit different it's more of a luxury car uh, and obviously you know if you're driving the Q7 which is what I the closest I've gotten to a car kind of like this although the Q7 is not nearly as big and really those German cars and the the Japanese ones there's not a lot of these full-size luxury SUVs out there uh, but compared to the MDX compared to the Q7 compared to those ones if you want to step up to the full size you know car it used to be people would say well i'm in that price range i'm going to get a uh, basically a suburban or if you want the nicer one you're going to get an escalade or you might get a ford expedition or something but the new lincoln navigator has really stepped up to the plate in my opinion and it's it's another option it's really a, a contender just by driving it for this short period of time i can tell why somebody would go for this one over the competition but of course it's all subjective and every car you know you're not going to buy you know a car with this price tag or one of its competitors unless it suits exactly what you're looking for but bottom line is this car seems to me like it would be a crowd pleaser and on the highway now we hit the gas oh wow 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 it's whooshing <laughs> Whoosh. it makes that sound i can barely hear the engine but i know it's there I know it's a 3.5 V6 twin turbo, and I know that it has a nice transmission to complement it very well. That transmission is fantastic. I've driven it in the Camaro, and uh, the new Camaro that Chevy has, and Ford developed it the other half of the way, I guess you could say, or maybe more. And of course, they get to apply it to their vehicles, and with the software and everything, and really configure it to fit the exact car and the application that you're, they're using. So whether it's a 650 horsepower uh, track car like the Camaro, uh, ZL1 or it's a 450 horsepower twin turbo V6 like this full-sized Lincoln Navigator SUV this transmission does the job fantastically it's smooth it gets you up to the speed and it has enough pickup I don't know all the words to say <laughs> but it's very very nice now I think as a final test, because I'm returning back to the dealership, I'm going to go around the auto park circle and see how it stands up to the turn. Does it make me fall over into this, into the window? <laughs> Which way am I going to fall? I don't know. Oh, this way. Yeah. No, because the seats are comfortable. The seats are holding me into place. And uh, the steering and the suspension, just everything comes together in this car. Going around turns like this doesn't make me lose any confidence it doesn't feel like the car is laboring to keep all the weight contained despite how high up it is this car is like double my height and despite all that it's uh, very very smooth 
Okay, now I'm gonna show you when we put it into reverse, what happens with this 360 degree camera. I'm gonna back up here, and you're gonna see that it is able to show me exactly where. I'm just gonna line up the lines with the lines on the road. I'm gonna check all my mirrors to complement that, and I'm gonna see that it's going in very nicely right where I'm telling it to go. This bird's eye view with that 360 camera is very nice. It's one of the options that comes on this one. Uh, at a lower down trim, you don't have to go this high even. But we get to turn the wheel and see that we are exactly perpendicular to that curb behind us. And you can park perfectly just like that. It has a, a few other camera modes like this. I can just press these buttons up here with this very responsive screen and see kind of what I want to see. The 360 there, double. What is that? Zooming in? Yeah, I like that feature on these because you can zoom in and see precisely how close you are to the curb or the pole or whatever it is. So it's really nice to be able to have that view and do everything there. All right, to conclude this test drive, all we have to do is press that parking gear select button. And to conclude the review, I want to say that, again, there are a lot of crossover SUVs in the market that's very competitive. But to be able to move up to one that has a very functional third row and a lot of space and a lot of functionality, this new Lincoln Navigator is a fantastic contender. And starting at 73500 as a starting price for this car, you know, there's a lot of options you can get in between. This black label, the very top edition, is very nice. And there's a lot of things I haven't included, which will be in the description below, such as the 8,600 pound towing capability out back. Now, please check the description. I hope you liked the review. This is it for this car, but there are more to come, so please subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next time.